Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and this is an Untangle Z4W appliance. And I've already got the back off, of course, because I want to show you what's inside. And I'll get a couple things out of the way. Yes, this is a wireless appliance. Yes, this runs Untangle, and it runs it very well. It's 100% compatible. But no, this is not your highest performance system. No, this is not your best Wi-Fi setup at all. I have this because it helps answer a question that a lot of people have of, I'm looking for something that is an affordable appliance that has the Wi-Fi built in, that runs something that can do web filtering and content filtering and the features that you get with application control with Untangle. But it's not complicated to set up in terms of you know, I love building the whole rack I have back there and setting up, and I've done plenty of videos on other wireless devices. But yeah, there's a lot more complexity to them. If you're looking for something to drop off at a friend's house that is simple, or maybe a family member that just needs basic Wi-Fi, let's say in a small area such as an apartment, a couple rooms, this actually works pretty good. It is only 2.4 gigahertz, and it does not handle with all the features turned on more than about 500 megs of traffic. It'll route at line speed, uh, but once you start doing application control and all the fun things that you may want to do with Untangle, yes, it will slow down. So I want to get those out of the way. And the final thing I'll get out of the way is yes, for the button mashers that have already probably added this comment, it's probably based on a Quotom. Uh, if you're not familiar with Q-O-T-O-M, uh, there are hardware devices like this. They build basically passively cooled uh, routing equipment. Well, they build mini computers, but a lot of it's popular for routing. I don't have a cross-reference to which one this is. This was bought directly from Untangle. And of course, as full disclosure, yes, I'm an Untangle reseller, but I actually did buy this. This is not something that was given to me. Uh, this is actually on its way to a client that needs internet connection in an RV. And uh, this is 2.4 is plenty enough to get their devices in an RV. Their important stuff's going to be higher lined in. I'm going to jump into details here in a second, but let's first... If you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free, and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. And we'll start right here on the NG Firewall Appliances page. This is their Z series appliances. So they have the Z4, which is great. And most of the time, we're not in any business, at least, installing these for a Wi Fi devices. We'll get something like the Z4 appliance, and they have the Z4 Plus, the difference being a little bit faster. And then they have their higher end appliances, or you can build your own. And Tangle's pretty flexible for being able to load it. Now, I am also doing a review soon of the Untangle Home Pro firewall, and this is going to be the hardware device I choose to use it on because it kind of feels like a solid home user solution for, like I said at the beginning, pretty turnkey. And the Z4W appliance, they have all the specs right here, uh, some pictures of it, 32 meg SATA, M SATA in here, but yes, it only, as I stated, 802.11 BG and N, but only 2.4 gigahertz. You also don't have any fancy ways to modify the channels or anything like that. I'll get to the config in a second. It's pretty straightforward, but there's not a lot to it in terms of features, which for general users, probably not a big deal. It does have four USB ports, just the way these come built. It does have a VGA, not that you really need to plug anything into it, it operates headless. It is passively cooled, fanless desktop, firewall throughput of 950, so pretty much right at line speed provided you don't need all the application filtering. And next-gen firewall throughput, well, it goes down, like they said, 500. That's going to vary with what rules you have applied and things like that. So this may rule it out right away for you in terms of if you're looking for something because you have a faster connection than 500, you want the full stream to go through. Well, yeah, now this may be a problem, but I want to get these out of the way. Now let's take a closer look at the hardware, though. Now, upon initial boot up and setup, we set up these LAN 3, LAN 2, LAN 1, and WAN. They're labeled kind of small just below, as you can see, but it is really tiny to read, so we like to have nice, clear things. So when we ship these to clients, these are the way the networks will be set up and the way we'll have them labeled. I did take the bottom off, and you can see the drive, the memory, if you wanted to add more memory to it, and there is the wireless, which I think is kind of neat. It's called an Azure Wave Wireless. Playing on names there for sure with whoever makes this. But the good news is if you wanted to build this yourself, you would be able to 
go and find this device somewhere and put these things in here and you know they're compatible with Untangle. Or just buy the appliance directly from Untangle, get the license for the Home Pro version, and away you go. You have a nice turnkey, simple solution. The power adapter is external and uh, I don't feel like I'm plugging it, but it's plugged in on the floor, so we're gonna plug this in and boot it up. Now, one thing I like about the way they labeled this is it says right here, warranty void if serial number removed or changed. And I think that's clever. Instead of saying warranty void if open, which by the way, there was nothing uh, that stopped me from opening this. It's just four screws in it. And you know, warranty is only void if I remove the serial number, which is just on this little plate. That makes sense. I, I like that from the standpoint of it's, you know, not really a good idea to say you're going to warranty void if I open this up. I might need to open this up. I might need to add memory to it. I don't like companies implying that because, well, there's a lot of rules here in America for protecting that, that just because you opened it up, you own it, you're allowed to open things up. But I don't want to get too far off topic. It does have a VESA mount and feet. So in this little bag here that came in the box, uh, not much else in the box besides the instructions, which are not really instructions, just a piece of paper labeling the, what the things are on this. We do have the VESA mount, which is kind of nice because now I can just take it, bolt this to the wall, and it's got the little standoffs that bolt into here, and that allows us to you know, easily mount it. Or if it's just gonna sit on a shelf somewhere, they do put some little rubber feet inside of here. And it's not a big deal if you block the bottom because there's no airflow needed as there's no fans, it's passively cooled, and it's just the giant heat sink that goes all the way across here. The processor is actually mounted directly to this with some thermal paste. I'm not gonna tear it all apart and have to re-thermal paste it. Uh, but taking the bottom off doesn't have to get into any of that. But this allows for easy passive cooling and it does run really cool. I mean, this whole thing is, well, relatively heavy in a solid heat sink. So let's put the screws back in, boot it up, and kind of give you a quick tour of what it looks like inside. All right, so we have the system booted up. It boots up relatively fast. I'd say two to three minutes, it's fully operational and up and running. We're running Untangle version 1601. I'll leave a link to the video I did where I dive into the Untangle software more in depth. But what makes this appliance different, obviously, is having the Wi-Fi on there. And let's talk about how you configure that. Now, out of the box, it built a bridge. And what that means is it took interface five, which is actually the Wi-Fi, and it is connected to the interface labeled as internal. That is the LAN one interface. And so let's go ahead and hit the config. And there's not too many options here. So interface five is the Wi-Fi. You can set it to bridge to internal or external if you want it in bridge mode. Both of those are configured. Actually, you can bridge it to whichever ones you want. And what bridging means is it acts like a switch. So devices you connect on the Wi-Fi are going to be talking to the same things that you connect to the LAN. It's the same subnet because you have bridged those two devices together to act as one. So it doesn't have its own assignment. Now you can build it out differently and build it out so it has its own IP address. So you have everything on the Wi-Fi being on a separate network than the physical layer devices, but you know, those at least the way that Kane configured was as bridge. Uh, you set the SSID, you have the options of AP or client, whether or not you want it to broadcast the SSID, whether or not you want the encryption types of WPA, WPA2, um, or only WPA2, pretty simple. And password goes here. As in anything you type in a password, it doesn't show little asterisks, it puts the password. So that's what I had the set the Wi-Fi password to. Now channel, it doesn't have any auto channel options. You choose the channel you want on here. It's pretty straightforward for setup and it came like this pretty much out of the box when you run through the wizard and set it up. It detects that it's a Z4W appliance and built these settings in there. So it wasn't too much to configure. Now, how far does the Wi-Fi reach? I didn't do any in-depth testing. I wandered around the office and you know, this is actually not bad. I was surprised I got it all the way at the very back of my building, which goes through numerous walls and not a great signal, but 2.4 carries through pretty well. I don't know if there's enough interest in me doing a comparison to other devices, but it's not gonna perform as well, I can already tell you that. These are just, well, not really high gain, but hey, they're better than nothing, so it's gonna be at least decent. And as I said at the beginning, this is probably a good turnkey solution for someone with a small, like maybe couple bedroom house, apartment, and uh, it's an easy solution for turnkey, I need all the filtering features of Untangle, I need the devices connected. And my recommendation is always, if you have things like a gaming computer or things that speed matter, not just you know browsing it on a phone or browsing the web on a laptop, or you're just gonna watch a few videos, hardline that. That is always the best way to uh, mitigate all the interference, any latency or any issues that come up with Wi-Fi, anything that you need the most speed for, plug it into a hardline and maybe get a small switch if you need that. Or you can bridge the 
uh, ports together. So we have the LAN 1, 2, and 3 that I'm not using. I could just bridge those together and then it gives me a couple things if I had a few devices. So I think this is a good turnkey, easy solution. And yes, you could probably find the hardware yourself if you wanted to hunt that down, or you can just buy it, as I said, right from Untangle. Uh, you hit their website, they have the price listed on there. And it's kind of an easy turnkey solution. And this is going to be a turnkey solution for the client that we're doing this for, who's going to be traveling in an RV. And uh, it'll definitely reach around the RV perfectly fine. And they don't have that fast of internet. So uh, the 500 meg limit for filtered internet, not going to be a problem for them. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.